Hello, and welcome to a new series. We're playing Salasta, Crown of the Magister. Um, this is, um, I guess in order to sate my, uh, <laughs> um, fix for Baldur's Gate 3, which I will also be doing a playthrough of. I was tempted to do a Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough early, but then, uh, the, uh, Larian Studio announced that they were, uh, your, your save was going to be basically no good. I've been meaning to play through Salasta for a while now, and now that I'm done, um, Battletech, I figured this was the perfect time to finally do it. I have, um, already made some characters. I'll go th through them real quick, and, um, and then we'll launch into the game. We've got Bronlar Geert. They are a sellsword barbarian. We've got Gertrude, Gertrude Redstone. A philosopher cleric. Um, we've got Herc, half orc wanderer druid, and we've got Sylvan elf ascetic ranger. I've been a little bit boring, but hopefully not too boring about my um, kind of min maxing here. I wanted to have flavor, but I also wanted to have, you know, a fairly optimized crew. Uh, I also wanted to have variety. I like spellcasters, but I don't like like massive complexity i think that druid and cleric are like pretty good in terms of having you know spells magic without having to you know manage magic it's, it's it splits the difference quite nicely and our barbarian is, is always a nice thing to have i could have had a fighter i suppose but uh i like a barbarian um and we're just going to launch in. If you don't know what Salasta is, and if you're just joining this just to check out my stuff, first of all, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Um, second of all, if you've ever played any d and if you've ever had any interest in D&D, um, particularly 5th edition, this game is modeled after 5th edition. It's actually licensed, I think. They, I think they, uh, the Steam source page actually says it's licensed 5th edition, which is kind of wild. Um, so this is... A kind of official non-official um fifth edition tactics rpg and uh it's very good i've played a little bit of it but not too much because i did want to do a series and i've been kind of saving myself so you can see here uh, the most i have here is a starting level one party so um with that prelude out of the way let's go ahead and launch into a game i'm gonna go ahead and select our four characters I'll have to um, re-familiarize myself with the controls. Um, there'll be a little bit of struggling, but since I am pretty uh, well versed in fifth edition rules and mechanics, I don't suspect there will be too much of a language barrier. Uh, this is fine. Oh, I see. There's even there's even more darkness that I could be seeing. All right, let's. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Hopefully, I guess you can see it better than I can. My monitor is. Uh, you know, the monitor. Anyway, I don't know how long these loading screens are, um, so I might do pauses. We'll we'll uh, treat this first one as a test drive, although the first loading screen tends to be a little bit longer than uh, most. Um, that's for games in general, but, you know, not this one. But what can I uh, say about D&D &D in the meantime? Um, I'm, a, you know, I'm a, D &D, a fan of D&D, &D, not a fan of Wizards of the Coast, not going to get into that too much, but all I'll say is I'm a huge fan of not having Pinkertons come over to my house and, you know, raid it for, uh, for uh, pieces of cardboard, if you know what I mean, then I don't need to explain myself too much, but let's do this. Some say it was a magical accident. The work of an evil god. No one knows for sure. The cataclysm destroyed the old High Elf Empire. Manakalan, they called it. And twisted the land beyond recognition. Now, only the brave and the foolish go there. In search. Ancient treasures. But something is happening deep in those badlands. Whatever it is, it can't be good. It can't be good. 
something I have to say I really appreciate about this game, but I'm going to read this real quick. Is It is the year 1024 after the Cataclysm. New states have arisen af around the Badlands and crave its treasures. Newly discovered road offers a safer route into the ruined heart of the Empire from the Principality of Masgarth, upsetting the balance of power. The Legacy Council is formed to ensure that this knowledge is shared. It issues a call for agents to explore the Badlands in its name. Adventurers flock to Kerr Kiflin, the Principality's capital and the home of the Council. Four strangers meet in the Gravekeep's cask, close to the Council chambers. Let me uh, let me get my thoughts out, um, but I don't want to slow, slow this down too much. Um, I really appreciate that this is an original campaign, and it's not called... D and D, you know, it's D and D mechanically, but it's a it's an original story, and I really appreciate that about Celasta. Is this the place for the Legacy Council job? Hope I'm not too late. Ran into a bit of trouble on the way here. Take a load off. There's plenty of donkey fish to go around. That's that's not the kind of voice you expect from a half orc druid. <laughs> that's probably because I of how their background. Yes. Looks like you've been waiting here a while. We do what we have to. What's this trouble you were setting up about? Well, I was making my way here when three bandits leapt from the bushes with crossbows. They dragged me off to some decrepit prison and tossed me in a filthy cell that smelled of rat piss. Don't know what was holding the place up. So there's a lot of there's a lot of pee pee jokes in this game. I did notice that there were a lot of pee pee jokes. I do really like this intro. I forgot about this. I think this is actually the tutorial in the form of uh, teaching us the game, but also in the form of uh, introducing these four characters. Escape the bandit's prison. Uh, okay. Select your character by clicking on the character in the 3D window or the character's portrait to select the whole party. Use the select all button um, at the bottom of the portrait display. I, I don't see that, but left click on the destination valid destination yeah, yeah, yeah um should should be okay there right click and drag to rotate the camera we're good there wsd um where is the select all i thought they said it was at the bottom of the portrait it might be no oh we'll figure it out later i don't really need to know that i love the how clean the the interface is in this i also love the um very kind of simplistic but still fairly beautiful looking environments like simplistic in the sense that like yeah this is very much a dungeon you know you're gonna get dungeons in this game and they're gonna look like dungeons and in fact they're not dissimilar um from a lot of uh vtt's that you may or may not have played uh if you are you know familiar with playing uh tabletop role-playing games online um it looks familiar but still it's clean and i like it a lot Click on the journal button to open the quest log. This will give you more information on your current objectives along with some useful context. Journal contains much more information than the quest log. All right. Quest log lists your current objectives, which you must complete in order to move the quest forward. Log also gives you hints and context to help you understand. Appreciate that. Um, your successes and failures are all recorded here. I, I have a, a huge track record of like not knowing what I'm supposed to do next and forgetting things and forgetting names and forgetting people and players and NPCs and my own birthday. So I'm glad that the journal is there to, you know, uh, as a source of a helpful guide. And it looks like I should be able to get in here, but I don't think I can. Um, I hope that that rotating the camera isn't a bit too aggressive. I'll try and be sparing with that to crawl through a hole click the other side you can get a better view of the other side by rotating the camera um move the, the mouse while you eh. character will automatically kneel crawl and stand up as appropriate on the way to the desired destination after moving the camera around you need, either double tap the character's portrait or press tab while controlling his character uh Okay, I guess they mean that by portrait. Okay, so I already did what the game wanted me to do. Okay, so um, we're just kind of doing a little bit of exploration. Can we get in here? No path of destination, even though that, uh, that, that gate looks very ajar. Press and hold alt to highlight various interactable objects. Yes. 
This is an interactable. I shall interact with it. And we have a torch. Very helpful indeed for seeing with. Um, do we have any other interactables? I might have to turn down the sensitivity. Let me know in the comments if, uh, if the rotating is a little bit too aggressive, too quick. I don't want to make anyone sick. I will, uh, do my best. Highlighted elements are interactive. Cursor indicates the action that can be performed. Opening, pushing, activating, lock picking, etc. Dice rolls. Difficulty class will be displayed. That's one thing that this, you know, maybe differs in this game. Although this is, you know, it's usually DM's choice. Is, uh, will they tell you how difficult this is going to look? What? Well, Hold on. I thought it was going to tell me the difficulty rating. Oh, well. Uh, again, I'll, I'll figure things out. Examine the object. I guess I should be right-clicking it, not left-clicking it. This game um, very much prides itself in its verticality. It is a D and D fifth edition kind of game, of course, and you know, so it's it's a tabletop. But um, one thing that the game a game can do that a tabletop can't do as easily is having um, really kind of layered uh, verticality, which is something you can do in person, like when you're role playing, but not as much. Uh, you know, it's, it's you know, there, there's a. I guess it really is up to the DM. It's, it's a tricky thing to do, but I do appreciate that this game attempts to do something that is not as easy. Um, depending on the character's strength and proficiency with athletics, you can jump and climb between two and five cells. You can always jump over two cells, drop down three cells, and climb up one cell, or jump up easy surfaces like ladders or ropes without any trouble. A character with strengths below 15 and no proficiency in athletics cannot jump far enough to reach the chest. A fighter with strength 15 20 can jump across three cells. So can a character with strength 11 to 14 plus a proficiency in athletics. In general, the critical path is always open to characters without superior physical abilities. However, optional loot is sometimes harder to reach. Don't give up though. You may find another way to get to that chest. So is it telling me I can't make that jump? I can make this jump. You can't make that jump. Um, do we have, no, I, I think that we cannot make that jump. We can jump that, but we can't jump the other way. If I was playing my barbarian right now, they could totally make that jump. Push. Okay. So let's right click this. Or can we, like, left-click hold? Push the, this object. It does, it's not telling me the difficulty. I was promised information on difficulty. It's fine. We have interacted with that object, and therefore we will go over here, and we will interact with this object, and we will get that chest, because I do want the chest. We have more things to interact with. Oh, there's bandits in there. Let's see, um, I assume we're gonna get a weapon here, possibly. This is our ranger, by the way. Um, I haven't uh, played too many rangers in person. In fact, I've played basically none. Um, wondering if I go in here, what's, uh, what's, the, what's the deal? Oh, wow. Oh, wow, we just murdered those people. I like how they just disappeared. <laughs> oh, feels so good. Click on a chest of other container or other container to loot everything you can. Uh, you carry affects your weight gauge, so be wary of reaching your weight limit. This is an interesting uh, thing that they would tell me about because uh, historically, at least in my experience, uh, weight has never been a thing I had to worry about in 5th edition because usually even having like passing weight is enough to carry as much as you want. Unless you find, like, a golden statue, in which case it becomes its own thing. Some items can stack in the same cell on your inventory. Split stacks, hold control key. Okay. 
we're gonna grab our stuff so this first episode will likely just be doing the introduction uh, we have rations and arrows all of the things that we have to track and uh, unlike most GMs the, the game is a bit more persnickety about that Persnickety? Persnickety. Persnickety? We left. So you escaped on scale. Well done, my friend. This council needs to get organized. They have no right to keep us waiting like this. Have the monorail. No one can tell you about this, do they? Well, let me tell you my story then. I too was accosted on the way here, but I faced my foes head on. So what are you waiting for? Spit it out, why don't you? This will be the story of our cleric. Got to have a cleric. You don't actually have a, have to have a cleric. Um, if you're not aware, I mean, you know, it used to be in times gone past, you had to have a cleric. If you wanted to survive, you needed to have a healer. And the cleric or the paladin was generally speaking your healer. Um, and I see, like, I'm not so sure. I'm not very aware, but like, you know, anyone that casts ma magic has any magic uh, proficiency could generally be your healer moving to a point in the yellow area uses your main action to dash dash doubles your maximum movement for the turn this is very DD. &D. however you cannot use your action to attack or cast a spell this is also not dissimilar to battle tech um, remember that you can move normally and then decide whether to dash further all right so um we're fighting a couple of wolves they're starving wolves so they shouldn't be too difficult to fight there's a couple of different ways we can do this um we can of course just like walk up and start smacking them but we can also uh we, we have options i love this uh this environment is very very pretty i you, you might have noticed i mean it's uh, you you know i don't want to be cruel but um obviously the, the team working on solasta is smaller uh i just you know i want to be respectful if i can um and so some things in this game definitely look like really beautiful compared to other parts i'm namely speaking of the dialogue because you're basically looking really close at models that are meant to be looked at far away sort of like you know holding a miniature right up to your face and like making it you know shaking it around as it does its dialogue i personally am not bothered by it because it the game makes up for it in other ways but um yeah and i actually kind of like the, the voice acting it's nice just to have voice acting we can i thought we could dash do we have to select dash yes we do so we can dash and in that way we will uh, maybe ensure that we don't have to fight two wolves um we can potentially cast a spell as a bonus action uh we have healing word so yeah i know about clerics um Clerics, uh, I feel like, are one class that have become less relevant as time goes on. Um, they used to be damn right necessary because they were, you know, the one class that could heal uh, without much penalty. To attack an enemy using your default weapon, move mouse over them and left click. You can also cast an attack spell or switch weapon configurations and use another weapon or ranged weapon. For example, depending on the character, some special abilities are also available. Try to shove an enemy back or down, select shove and choose from the available options. If you shove an enemy backwards into a pit, they'll fall. So we can try and shove um, this wolf. There's actually room behind them, so I'm not sure if shoving them back is actually going to be helpful. Knock prone or push away. If we push them back, are they just going to go back one tile? Now I'm pretty sure that if we run away that they get all of them get attacks of opportunity that's a thing if you don't know um that you have to be wary of but we can disengage i'm gonna disengage if i d disengage uh, I'd rather be like here. So we're disengaging. That just means we can't dash. Disengaging ca um, counts as an action. Um, but it means that we get to walk away from three wolves without, you know, getting attacked by all three of them. They get attacks of opportunity. And, 
you know, like my my knowledge of rules and stuff in D and D, um, it's a little muddled because you know I I have several different versions of D and D kind of um, mixed together. I've often wondered, like I thought, attacks of opportunity were kind of kind of a martial skill. Um, so how is it that wolves can have attacks of opportunity? But then again, it should make sense. Like you know, you're trying to run away from a wolf while it's right in front of you. It should be able to attack you. Clicking dodge uses your main action and provides the following benefits. Until the start of your next turn, all attackers you can see have disadvantage on their rolls to hit, and you have advantage on dexterity saving throws. If you didn't know, uh, if you don't know what advantage and disadvantage is, it's a very fifth edition thing. Uh, basically, advantage is you roll two d20s and um, use the higher one, and disadvantage is you use the lower one. So we're going to shove this uh, wolf, hopefully off a cliff Ooh. poor pooch um we haven't actually taken any damage yet we have ac 15 which is not bad for like you know level one we're gonna end our turn this thing's gonna attack uh it's still missed and this thing rolled a critical miss, and I'm not sure what that means. Um, it means different things to different people, you know? We're again going to shove this um, wolf off a cliff. And um, that's not like a freebie, by the way. I am rolling an athletics check against the wolf's athletic, uh, athletics check. I'm rolling a 13 plus 1, that's because my strength is plus 1, and then they are rolling a 10 plus 0, because they don't have enough strength to... I'll give themselves a bonus so uh they failed so they just fall to their death We're st we still have yet to take any damage from these wolves which is kind of nice so i'm just going to go ahead and, and shove this last wolf oh out of reach okay cancel we'll walk right up i guess you can't shove diagonally um now this is, you, you might wonder like how come i can move here without provoking an attack of opportunity it's only when you leave the attack range of a creature i'm not trying to like um show off my knowledge of rules or anything like that but uh honestly it's partially i'm just kind of reminding myself why is it that i can do that so we did all of that i don't know if there were like fresh objectives that i or bonus objectives Disengage and push the rock. This new opponent is too tough for you. Disengage and immediately move to push the rock in order to break the natural bridge. Get rid of the grayback wolf. Right. We have a... The game is uh, getting a little ahead of itself. Because it hasn't shown us the grayback wolf yet. To avoid an opportunity attack... You can use a disengage action for the rest of your turn. You can move close to enemies freely without any risk of opportunity attacks. Disengage uses your main action, though. Well, we've already done that, so I knew, I knew all of that. Um, I do really appreciate the uh, visual of of like showing us the the D twenty. It's always I always get a little bit of a kick out of that. Okay, proceed with disengaging, and then we want to. Um, move over here. Is it going to let us push the rock? It shouldn't let us. Because we yet used our action to disengage. So unless it, you, you know, counted as a bonus action. Anyone here could be a Sorak. 
you never know. Oh, come on. <laughs> You'll see. So, anyway, Sorax might be. <laughs> Orcs are quite real, and not just in the Badlands. <laughs> no kidding, bud. You're you're kidding. Orcs? No way. And decided to leave the road to look for shortcuts. Beautiful day. Blue skies. Birds are singing. And fell right into a bloody hole. Damn. What a very inappropriate voice for this character. In Celeste, you will explore deep, dark places without natural light sources. It makes exploration and combat harder, especially for characters without dark vision. You can equip torches or cast light spells to reveal your environment for your whole group. Well, okay, but we are a half-orc. Surely, to goodness, we have dark vision. You can light flammable items like torches on holders by interacting with them by holding while holding a torch or by casting a flaming spell on them, like the cantrip Firebolt. Right, but we are a half-orc. There a, is no godly way that we do not have um, dark vision. You cannot tell me that half-orcs do not have dark vision. I think we can see... The fact that we can see it all tells me that we have dark vision. We have some stuff, we have a choice of directions, or is that just like generic darkness? We can't go there. Okay, let's have a look at, uh, you have fallen into the dark. Cast a light cantrip or use a torch so you can see. Okay, they really want me to do this. Um, I, I have healing word again. Um, switch your equipped item to this configuration torch. All right. Light the two torches. Examine the totem. We rolled critically... <laughs> we didn't critically fail. We failed to uh, roll a history check. So there are um, checks in D&D, like history, nature, arcana, religion, um, where basically our character tries to remember if they can um, the significance of some kind of symbol or even a creature or uh, basically anything and it's you're just rolling to to see if your character knows that um it's an interesting mechanic i have mixed feelings about it it's a weird thing i think in D, &D. i've kind of talked about it um in previous you know recordings if your character can cast healing spells like a cleric, for instance, pass, uh, press the cast spell button and select the spell in order to recover lost hit points. You can also use a potion found in nearby loot. Well, we have healing words, so I think we should be able to heal ourselves. Um, not sure how much. 1d4 healing plus ability bonus. Okay, so we'll give ourselves 1d4. Do we get a... Oh, we don't get a cool dice might be just like a generic four like it's just a, a static four plus our bonus we've got a bunch of stuff another torch some arrows some more rations um we can potentially heal ourselves again is this a cantrip mm, that looks like a level one in which case yeah we've already we've already used up a level one spell these are level ones and these are cantrips Cantrips are like you can do them as many times as you want and sometimes cantrips can be a little bit broken if you ask me um, But level ones you can only do them a certain times a certain number of times per day So those are the uh, orcs Activating cautious mode makes you slower, but it grants two benefits hidden objects and traps are easier to find and you are harder for enemies to spot when an enemy starts to notice your presence, a gauge will appear over their head, giving you time to react. Remain three cells above the enemy in this mode, and you can't be detected. I appreciate that can't. Can't not be detected. Um, 
for a number of reasons there's a you know like there's a very, kind of a resurgence of ttrpgs lately i think um and especially like old school stuff and uh, you know the the maybe the trope the cliche of um tabletop role-playing games is that you know you want to do literally anything and you roll dice to find out if you do um and there's different ways to interpret that of course and there's different ways to implement that um risk basically uh so you know when you're being cautious when you're trying to be stealthy you would roll a stealth check um and that might be true in this game as well but uh you know there you're also an adventurer and i remain that as an adventurer you should have skills and understanding and experience even at level one to do basic things to not be a bumbling fool um surely you know like if you have stats that make you a bumbling fool in some regard then yeah i mean obviously you there's going to be risk involved but like if it's a basic thing like you know i don't know tie a knot um unless you're like trying to tie a knot that's gonna hold back a dragon that's like trying to fly away then you should be able to tie a knot a basic one right like, it doesn't matter uh climb a tree you should be able to climb a tree the golden rule though is a G as a gm is that if you can climb a tree that means they can climb a tree who is they anyone you know like if you can climb a tree that means a goblin can climb a tree i'm uh, kind of struggling right here to okay i think this is better all right there we go so we've got a campfire down there i think we can do a rest here Nice. To recover hit points, special abilities, and spells, you must take a long rest. To do so, you need to gather your party around a safe space and have one ration of food per party member. Safe spaces are represented by a campfire. They are also shown on the location map. Many spellcasters know more spells that they can recall at a given time. Prepared spells represent uh, those... Prepared spells represent those a character can use by spending spell slots. Check your heroes list of known spells and choose which ones you want to prepare. Spells that are not prepared cannot be cast. Many characters know more spells than they can prepare, so choose carefully. So we're going to do a long rest. Um, I guess we can only do a long rest now. There is the, a, a short rest option um, as well, at least in D&D. I'm not sure if that's something that this game has. Uh, let's go ahead and prepare some spells. We do have more spells than we have selected right now. I don't think that we necessarily need Long Strider. Entangle might be good. Um, good Berry is one of my favorite spells. It's a very, very dumb but surprisingly useful spell. Um, emit a wave of force that causes damage and pushes uh, creatures and objects away. Charm Person is generally speaking a very useful spell uh fairy fire might be nice detect magic uh fog cloud penalize creatures inside it that rely on sight um i think most of this is fine uh we have venomous spike and um poison spray which are the two cantrips that i started my character with they're generally speaking very good cantrips and cantrips are like you can do them as much as you want and it can be kind of stupid um charm person seems like a really good spell right now you've recovered the following features spell slots all right so that means we have uh our level one spell back we lost two rations that's weird also, what happened to all the baddies in here? I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna have to do some rotating. I can't really avoid it.
all set wonders. Yes, but I have a good reason for that. It's none of your bloody business. Oh, isn't it? I'm pretty sure this is a stealth mission. <laughs> This is so wildly inappropriate. Um, I don't think any of these characters should necessarily be good stealth. I guess the druid would be okay. I mean, they're, you know, druids are meant to be in the forest, right? And that's not a, that's not like a stereotype or anything like that. I mean, that's gen literally like their pantheon and their whole way of being is like nature and shit. Use caution mode to move stealthily. Enemies can hear you if you, they cross your noise circle and they will stop you as soon as you leave cautious mode your noise um spot you or your noise circle depends on your armor type and your stealth stealth skill also it's a good idea to avoid mo moving into an enemy's field of view while carrying a light source remain in cautious mode for the whole duration of this mission you must make a stealth check if you attempt an object interaction while wait Ah, uh, well, within hearing range of an enemy, such as opening a door. So there you go. There's your risk or, um, you know, uh, mechanic for um, moving stealthily. It'll remain undetected only if you succeed. All right, so we're going to go into caution mode. This is our barbarian. This is like the last character I would want to do this, this stealth tutorial, but it's fine. Not saying barbarians have to be loud. I'm just saying they they're not the showcase for stealth. Right click and drag to rotate the camera view. You can also rotate yeah yeah yeah. Oh I mean I guess right click is better for rotating. So we have thieves tools. I don't have a rogue. I probably should have ha put put a rogue on my team, but I'm not very good at stealth at the best of times. So we're following these tracks. Uh, oh, we're being spotted currently. Okay. Luckily, the game is fairly forgiving. So now we are sort of within their hearing. So if we try and move these parts, we're going to have to do a stealth check. Uh, apparently, we didn't have to do a stealth check. Recover the stolen gem. Enter the fort. Reach the next courtyard. So we're going to want to walk, get, you know, not be seen by that guy. Um, don't think we need that door. We need that door. To try picking lock mouse over lock door or chest and left click. If you sl select your whole party, the most skilled character is automatically chosen for the task. You must have thieves tools in your inventory to try picking a lock. Being proficient with thieves tools will help. My character should not be proficient, but apparently I succeeded. I don't believe that the game throws me freebies even in the, in the tutorial, so it's pretty funny that the barbarian just kind of like rolled well. Do not go that way. There's a man standing right there. I don't know what they're looking at. Also, this is our one, like, basically the only human on our team. I tried to, like, I really didn't want to have humans. Like, I didn't want to have a party of just, like, four humans. So, um, I believe the cleric is a, a dwarf. Obviously, the druid is a half-orc. Um, and the ranger is an elf. And maybe that's, that is kind of, like... A trope, but I think it, it's a trope that works. Angry Violet. We got some. We we gained some stuff. Find the treasure room. All oh, right, we can um, we can go up this thing. 
and climb up these vines. Nothing in here, I don't think. Oh, we spotted a trap. Not sure. Okay, so we can try and disarm the trap. That's going to be another check. You must first detect it if you try to open or lock pick a chest with a trap that you haven't detected. You'll only find out about the trap when you trigger it to try disarming a trap mask over it and left click. You'll need to make a successful dexterity check. These tools will help if you're proficient with them. <laughs> Can only be disarmed by triggering them. If you fail to disarm a trap, you may trigger it or lock it or simply need to try again. Okay, so we are going to uh, attempt to disarm it. We succeeded. More good checks from the barbarian. I do think that... Um, what are we rolling? Uh, we are rolling 19 plus 2. I think that I gave them pretty high dexterity. Can I... Um, See their character sheet. Yeah, they have a 15 dexterity, so I mean that's pretty good. So they also trapped the chest, so we'll have to disarm that as well. Oof. So we are now poisoned. We got hit with a poison blade or something. It's fine. We got the heirloom and 20 GP. It's funny that we can't check out that other chest. Why are we not being cautious? Okay, so um, we might be seeing uh, some kind of cutscene here. Sometimes in the course of your adventure, some non-player characters may become critical. This means if you let them die, the game is over. If you attack an enemy while undetected, you gain the advantage of surprise. That means you have advantage on your roll to hit, and your opponent cannot react before the next turn. If you are a rogue, your attack will be a sneak attack. Or not a rogue. So they're starting a um, battle. I believe we are also in the initiative right now. Bronlar, yeah. So Liam's going to try and attack the um, Lone Shark. We're going to try and get behind them and uh, attack them. Oh, we've been detected. Oh, well. I don't know if I was uh, being stealthy there or not, but either way, we're going to attack them. Oh, was that a critical hit? Oh, my God. <laughs> Our first attack. Is he is he natural twenty? Are you four here to see Lord Karen? Um, Bronlar. So you can choose which of your characters uh, answer, and like depending on their personality, they will definitely they'll they'll answer differently. Well, we're not here to drink ourselves to death. Well, thank you for making that clear. Well, if you're here for Lord Karen of the Legacy Council. That would be me. Then we are here at your service, sir. Very good. We kind of need a little bit more info about the job, my lord. Well, I suppose it's better if you know what you're doing. What do you want to know? So, um, Kellen, I believe, is a bit more law abiding. I didn't put any evil characters on my team. In fact, most of them are fairly kind or altruistic. Um, but um, they are, you can pick two percent personality traits. So I've made some of them cynical, I've made some of them pragmatic, and I've made some of them uh, maybe even a little bit cruel or greedy, but you know, maybe to be kind. Um, and I appreciate that. Uh, you know, bit of conflict in that personality, but um, anyway, you you might see that come out in their dialogue. Are we going to work for you? Not exactly, no. I'll be your contact with the Legacy Council, which you will serve as deputy. That's why we need to go there and get you sworn in. We hear this is a mission for the Council, but what is it exactly? Dear Moraike, you don't know. 
I'll try to make it simple. But you know, big simple. Politics. The council includes representatives of the most powerful and influential organizations in the Eastern Kingdoms. It was created to lead a joint effort to explore the Badlands. Which countries make up these Eastern Kingdoms? Simple. The Principality of Mazgar, here, is in the middle. The Snow Alliance lies to the north. The Kingdom of Galavan to the east, and the New Empire to the south. All friendly, more or less, but the peace is fragile. Uh, I'm going to definitely be prodding the game for a bit of world building when I can. And the Church of Einar guarantees fairness, led by Marshal Beric Sunblaze and Oathkeeper Lyra Keen. What are the Badlands, really? Simply put, they are a monster-ridden, chaotic wasteland that used to be the Elven Empire called Manakalan. It was destroyed about a thousand years ago by the Great Cataclysm. Now, only ruins remain, full of forgotten knowledge, riches, I appreciate you answering these questions that should be very well established to anyone who would be here for longer than a day. I think we know enough now. Thank you. Um about the principality? Can you tell us about this place. The principality. We don't exactly have the time. Anyway, the principality of Mazgar is ruled by Princess Kaiwood Silverfly. We are a wealthy state with fertile land and the easiest access to the Badlands, to a pass called the Copperhead Road. We're in the capital, Ker Kifla, which was once part of the ancient Manikalan Empire of the High Elves. Hence the magnificent Elvish buildings up there in the High Tower. While we don't have a state religion, all of the major faiths of Salasta are represented here, though we tend to favor Aena, the god of valor and fidelity. We should go, don't you think? Very well. Come, gather your things. You're late for your swearing in. Hurry up and wait. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> Lol. All right. Well, so with that, um, unless there's any like a major cutscenes or more dialogue, uh, I'll do. I'll, I'll tie up our our kind of introduction here to the game. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope that you are, uh, up for this. I hope that you will join me on this adventure. Um, should be fun. And, uh, then, uh, hopefully I will complete this game, uh, around the time that the, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 comes out and then we'll do that. Uh, it's going to be a very RPG, tactics RPG, uh, flavor for a little bit. Let's see, uh, yeah, so we're just kind of throwing in our courtyard. This is our downtime and opportunity to um shop i believe or uh you know ask stuff or even do some information gathering uh for the next quest i'll read this real quick the principality's capital is a large city right now you need to find the legacy council once you've been there you'll have access to the fast travel function but for now you'll have to walk a little go north and walk up the stairs to sunblaze court then take the stairs west to the council all right, so um, that'll be that, and we are off to the races. Uh, I hope that you do join me, and, um, you know, if you are going to, if you uh, want to see more of this, I would hope that you will support it by hitting the like button, and if you are just finding my channel now, I, you know, I encourage you to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.